I loved uh, Richard there's kind of taking Adam Bezobang to rights. Now, there was a flag out there. You just weren't looking. So, uh, anyway, from Mazda's, there might be a bit of a clear up here, but onto a race which I think myself and hopefully quite a few people who are watching this are certainly looking forward to. If you liked the Mini 7s earlier on, kick it up a notch because you're about to see something else that's very, very special. Every time I've watched a race from this championship, it's always been nothing short of spectacular. And it is the Mini Melias, the Mini Melias and the Mini Libra category. And these are two very special sets of cars, which I know every time they've been out on track somewhere, whether they're supported uh, on their own regular club weekends or on weekends where they've supported the British Touring Car Championship or DTM in the past, there's never been a dull race from these cars. They've always been fantastic to watch. And I hopefully expect this will be more of the same. There's one first of their two races coming up today. And um, coming into the weekend, of course, after two races that they had at Silverstone, in terms of the, the point standings coming into the weekend, uh, I believe the, cha the person who was the championship leader, uh, it should be um, Aaron Smith, I think it is, if I scroll up to find the points, which they are. Yes, yeah, so Aaron Smith took a win in a second place, and he leads the way with 39 points ahead of Rupert Deeth on 38. Now, Andrew Jordan, who's the defending champion, sadly not here this weekend, but he's third in points coming to the weekend. Chris Morgan is fourth, and then Jeff Smith, who have some of the Jeff Army in the... Uh, comments on both the uh, Beer ACC and Mini 7 Racing Club live feeds that you'll have. And again, hello to everyone that are watching on the, uh, the YouTube and Facebook feeds for Mini 7s. Uh, Jeff Smith, fifth. Then Colin Peacock, who is the, one of the main men who uh, puts this, these championships together. And I think we do well to have a, a chat with him later on in the assembly area after the race. But we'll do that in a moment because we've got the grid coming up here. So the grid for the first Mini Melia Mini Libra race. Kane Aston on pole position, former champion, alongside Jeff Smith on the front row of the grid. Aaron Smith, championship leader, and Rupert Deeth, second in the points at the moment in the second row. Colin Peacock and Lewis Selby, one of my favourite looking cars of the weekend. We'll get to that in a second. In sixth, Ashley Davis and Ben Colburn, who is a uh, one of the regular Westbourne Motorsport drivers starting in eighth on the grid. Then Rob Howard and Phil Bull and Brown round out to the top ten of the Mini Medias. We move forwards down into uh, row six where we see Darren Cox, who is the uh, person behind the race and WTF1 and other uh, uh, motorsport media outlets. He's alongside Sean King on the sixth row of the grid. Mark Sims and Larry Wall make up the seventh row for the Mini Medias. Uh, and then we go to row eight on this uh, entire group. We have Tony LeMay and Kieran McDonald starting uh, at the back of that, that mix. And then we go back to row nine, where we see Robert Humphreys and Darren Mason, who didn't set a time. And then I thought we'd have some mini Libra cars on the field, but uh, I think we possibly did. Yes, we do. There we go. So Richard Colburn in the Libra category is in 19th place on the grid. He starts on Libra pole alongside Peter Hills in 20th spot. And then Philip Harvey and then Les Stans, who didn't set a time earlier on. He starts right at the back of the grid. He's also mini Libras as well, as also is Philip Harvey, who didn't set a time either. So 22 of our mini medias and mini Libras. And again, if you've watched these cars in the past, and I hope it's not an anti-climax at all, and I'm sure it won't be. Get ready for non-stop action for 20 minutes. Because these little buzzsaws are proper pocket rockets. They are brilliant to watch. They're brilliant to drive, as I've been told. And the medias do add something brilliant. They, they have a fantastic look about them with the, beautiful, with the brilliant wide wheel arch. They have a lot more, it's like more of a, a butch stance to them, even though they are quite small diminutive cars. They pack a real punch. And they do put on a great show. I've watched the highlights of them racing at Thruxton, at Brands Hatch, at Silverstone. And I'm sure with the long straights here at Snetterton, they will give us just as much top action as anyone else as well. So, on to the formation lap they go. Weaving from side to side in the car. There is uh, Darren Cox, who I think that's one of the ex... I think that's the ex Endaf Owens car that's been in there. It's Darren Cox, of course, who... Uh, has been behind. He has worked for uh, Nissan in their PR department. I think he was around in the GT Academy days. And of course, nowadays, oversees other media outlets like The Race and WTF1 and others on top of that. World's fastest gamers in there too, as well, which I've been privileged enough to work with. And certainly taking to mini racing quite prominently. Uh, just give you a bit of specs on these cars as well, because of course they are pretty spectacular, these uh, Mini Melias. So the Mini Melias, they run a 1293cc modified A-Series engine. They can go from 0 to 60, check this out, a Mini Melia race car, 
4.5 seconds. They are absolute rocket ships off the line in terms of acceleration. They can do 125 miles an hour. They only weigh 660 kilograms. They're only 10 kilograms heavier than a Mini 7 car, which is pretty substantial. Uh, Four-speed trans manual transmission. They run on Dunlop tyres on 10-inch wheels. And a car that can cost between anywhere, on average, between 12 to 20,000 pounds in this championship. And running costs for one of these cars per season from about six and a half thousand pounds for a car like this that goes that fast is that good and it looks it looks that cool and drives that well that's one of the steals steals of club racing i think in some cases and there's so many top drivers that come through this of course we've seen other drivers that have been quite prominent in this one sam summerhays has been quite good andrew jordan of course who former british touring car champion who was last year's champion he was out at Silverstone, but not here this weekend, sadly. Uh, also, we've had on uh, Nick Padmore, who has been a, re a regular racer in uh, historic Formula One cars at the wheel of a Williams. Uh, of course, he's been racing these minis quite often. Uh, also, we've had uh, Lee Deegan, who has been quite quick in these cars before. He's been a former champion of the Civic Cup and all sorts of other hot hatch championships across the last few years. And uh, he's been in there too. And many other top drivers have come and gone. Kane Astin, who remember, covered some of his races before, as far back as 2013 or 2014, when he was winning the championships, back at the front of the grid, and he was in quite uh, stellar form at what I saw at Silverstone. But he'll be looking to try and build on that as much as possible. And then the grid up on my laptop in terms of so he's in the front alongside him. So for this first race. Change the grid because it showed me that something was clicked the wrong grid. Ah, that was, that was looking at the Silverstone results, not the SST one. So get the right grid, Scott, otherwise you'll be in the field yourself as you already are. So, um, anyway, it's funny because it's true. Um, so, Kane Aston then starts on pole position, Jeff Smith alongside him. I'm sure, as I say, there are plenty of people in the comments uh, from the Jeff Army who will be uh, cheering him on. Of course, Jeff Smith, I believe, last it was last year's mini. Mini 7 champion, if I'm correct. So he will then be keen to extend his advantage from those in that season. Yes, Jeff Smith won the points last year by seven points. He won the Dunlop Mini 7 uh, class, the main Mini 7 class. There is car 20 on the grid, which is Mark Sims, one of our Mini Medias. If I can, very quick note to the points. So as we talked about um, the Mini Medias, the Mini Libras, for example, Craig Cox was top of the points coming into the weekend with 19 points. Hugh Turner with, with 12, 17. Uh, both aren't here this weekend, I believe. So Phil Harvey's the highest placed points contender who will be there. There's Dan Lewis, there's Stanton, Peter Hills and Richard Colburn from the Mini Libra category. So a quick colour check. It is the grey and fluorescent yellow car of Kane Aston on pole on the left-hand side. The orange car of Jeff Smith on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side in second position. And then the next cars on the grid are Aaron Smith in his pink car, uh, Rupert Deeth in the silver car with the orange arches, Colin Peacock in the red car in fifth on the grid, and then the Napa Racing UK livery, the brilliant-looking blue, blue and yellow car, akin to the British touring cars that will adorn the same livery, starting in sixth for Lewis Selby. Right. Are you ready? Because this will be another 20 minutes of excellent racing for the Mini Melias. Here we go then. Red lights are on any second. Now, Aston and Smith on the front row of the grid. Let's go Mini Media Racing. Cracking stuff on the front row of the grid. Good start for Lewis Selby from row three. He was trying to come past the second row pair. Around Smith and Rupert Deep, but down towards turn one for the first time. Smith on the outside. Kane Aston on the inside. And Smith turns across and cuts the nose off of Kane Aston to Lee heading into Richie's corner for the first time. There's Tony LeMay in car 69, gets a nice start from him. And now down towards uh, the Wilson Hepper for the first time. Down the outside looks Aaron Smith, championship leader on Kane Aston. Can't get the move stuck. He's now under attack from Rupert Deef as they come through. And Lewis Selby is also uh, dropped behind Colin Peacock. And the car that's moving along, I think it's car 87. And that's Ashley Davis who's coming to cracking start. He's now up to, I think, fourth or fifth position. And he started back in seventh. So he's got, got to move on off the lines to come down towards Agostini. And already you can see Jeff Smith trying to put some heat into the tyres. He's not weaving to try and block, I promise you, just to get some heat into those little, little 10 inch Dunlop mini Dunlop tyres he's got on that car. Back to Agostini. He'll pile in. And again, you thought the mini sevens leaned on their arches. These cars are a bit more extreme. There's Darren Cox who just lifts a wheel into the left hander. Into. Hamilton now for the first time back towards Oggies. A few more cars, uh, top, spectators atop the 
uh, spectator banks just on the back of shot you saw there. But you see the uh, tops of the windscreens glinting in the sunshine as we see uh, uh, Jeff Smith turning his way out through Williams. And look at them. This fantastic string of mini medias, these beautiful little wide arch mini Coopers, 1293cc engines. And again, they go from 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds. They are rapid little buzzsaws, and they are brilliant to watch. And they're ready, it's going to kick off, I believe, because Kane Aston, I can see, is going wheel to wheel. Here they go. Kane Aston round the outside into the complex at Brundle. He'll flip right at Nelson over the curbs. Jeff Smith thumps the curb on the inside of Nelson. That gives Aaron Smith a chance to try and catch up. Fourth is Rupert D. Fifth now is Ashley Davis. And sixth in there too, not too far away. Looks like Colin Peacock and Lewis Selby. So they'll be in there too at some point. Just lifting up the dust. We'll get a handle on who is leading in the mini Libra category as they come across the line in a second. But into Coral for the first time is six of them together. I'll catch you at what's the end of that. Jeff Smith gets a little sideways. Really pitching the car left through Murray's as he tried to get the car uh, turned around on the corner. There's Colin Peacock. Come across the pit straight, but onto the uh, center straight for the first time to end lap one, and it's going to be Aston Leeds. But he's side by side with Jeff Smith. They kick up the cement dust after the oil laid down by one of the Mazda races earlier on. And you can hardly see a thing. It's Gorillas in the mist. We'll let Minis in the mist at this point in time. They are so quick. But, as I hope they would, it's four of them for the lead, and they're all kicking off together. So, down towards Wilson Hare, but any of them will be in, in the mix of the lead. But it's going to be Jeff Smith who holds on. Rupert, he sends it down the inside of Aaron Smith and says, right, my third place. Yoink, if you don't mind. And into the position he goes. But Smith has a little peek up the inside again to try and get him back. And can't quite manage it. Kane Aston, meanwhile, is letting those two scrap to try and chase after Jeff Smith again. Now down the back straight of uh, the short straight of Agostini here, also getting in there too. Now that's the car in sixth position. Now that is on the back of that looks like that is Ben Colburn. Ben Colburn in the green and orange car just drives straight around the outside of the um, 87 car of Ashley Davis. That was a pretty clean pass. Good stuff from Ben. You can tell he's done stuff like, uh, if I'm correct, I think he's done junior saloon cars and also Clio's quite a lot as well. And he's also, I think, part of the Colburn family that does a lot of historic racing. You know, things like. Austin A30s, and I think they're also classic minis as well. So they're quite well versed in these small, in these small cars, and they, they, they do well to put these cars towards the front of the field. It's now becoming an, a seven-car train because it's Lewis Selby in the Napa Racing UK livery car. That's just at the back of that train. There it is, just the right shot you can see there. Back of the seven-car group. Colin Peacock trying to go with them as well. So it could be an eight or a nine-car group because also you see there is Rob Howard in the turquoise car at the back of that group. And it's this group like any other sort of kind of close one mate racing like Cajuns or anything else this group will get bigger and bigger and bigger as the cars behind start to catch up and catch up through the bomb hole Smith continues to lead a little way with their Bedith that now put him under pressure from the pink car and Smith in fourth position through Corum just watching these cars dance through these long left hander right hand and flick it left and Jeff Smith is ever flamboyant he knows how to pitch that car through Murray's because it seems to work it seems to kind of throw the car into the corner into a direct exactly in with sort of have it end up when he throws it in to make it slide so it quickly points the direction he wants to go and so it actually seems to work Jeff Smith then fastest lap of the race on the first proper flying lap around 213.042 and I saw Rupert Dink was going for second on Kane Aston so I'm not sure if he actually managed to make that stick but we'll wait and see. Yes, he did. So Rupert Deeth in the silver and orange car with the um, mini spares Union Jack on the boot lead. He's now up second place. Whoa, and round the outside looks Aaron Smith. Talk about riding cowboy. Round the outside looks Aaron. Can't get that one stuck. And he manages to sit back into the mix. He's going to hold on ahead of, uh, looks. I think that's Ashley Davis who has got back past Ben Colburn, if I'm not mistaken. No, but I think Ben Colburn is still in fifth position. So Ashley Davis sixth, Lewis Selby seventh. Colin Peacock 8th, um, uh, the 72 of Howard, Rob Howard in 9th, and the Philip Bull and Brown rounds up the top 10. Darren Cox is also up there in 11th place. As for the Libra class cars, the only car I can see registering on the timing screen is the Richard Colburn car. So it looks like for whatever reason Peter Hills, Philip Harvey and Lee Stanton didn't take the start, which is a shame, but if they can get those cars fixed, I'm sure they'll be back out for uh, race 2 tomorrow. Best part about it, we've had all this action and there's still 14 and a quarter minutes to go as Jeff Smith just lifts that inside rear wheel. I'm looking at the production crew laughing at this. It's fantastic to watch. It's such entertaining fun between these mini meters. They're a brilliant addition to the timetable. We're really pleased we have them on the timetable. Um, we're going to go at it again in a second because here comes Rupert Deeth for the lead this time. And he does get the lead. So before they turn in, Rupert Deeth takes over the, the head of the field in this mini media race. 
in two runs of Nelson. Oh, big bite of curb there from Aaron's Jeff Smith. Always put it onto two wheels there. You can tell he's pushing. Fantastic fourth. It's a uh, third, I should say. He's got fourth place car, Aaron Smith, right behind him, championship leader. And Ben Colburn's starting to leave Ashley Davis uh, behind now. He's closing up to these top four as they glide back into view through Corum. Back through with that panel. They flip left through Murray's again. Not so sideways on the exit of the corner there with Jeff Smith, but now he's going to get a good run here as he tucks in underneath the boot lid of Rupert Deeth. And now here they come back towards Riches again. Ken Aston still third. It's then Aaron Smith fourth. Deeth sets the fastest lap of the race despite being in clear air. Turning in. Come moving around beautifully. It's fantastic to see them just. Oh, and that was really wide for Rupert Deeth there through Riches, and that might give. Smith and Co. a chance to get back past again. There's going to be three of them all together for second place. Deeth does hold on. Jeff Smith again lifts the inside rear wheel through Wilson. And now, all that battling has brought Ben Colburn back into the mix now to fifth position. He's now in there too. Davies still sixth. Selby seventh. Peacock eighth. Howard ninth. The Bull and Brown tenth. And it's still Cox, Sims, King, LeMay, War, Richard Colburn and the sole mini Libra in this race. And then Humphreys back in 17th position. Now then, three abreast for third place. Here we go. And it's Ben Colburn. He's going to take two for the price of one. Up the inside. Don't mind if I do, chaps. See you later. He's up into third place. Brilliant stuff from Ben. Great stuff on that move there. And that's, again, they're, they're that small. You can go three wide. And it doesn't look that dramatic. If it was any wider cars out there, three abreast to Agostini would be an absolute no-go because they're quite, quite small. Even with the wider arches, three abreast looks like, looks like a normal race for them. They can do it all day. Great stuff. So top five, top six, in fact, pretty much all together. And now it's Jeff Smith's turn to try and... I suspect Jeff, Jeff Smith is in second place at the moment, but if Ben, ben, ben Cole was probably sat there thinking, if you can't get the job done, Jeff, move aside. I'll have a go if you don't mind. So down at the back straight, weeding to try and break the toe if they can. Kane has to get shuffled down to fifth after he starts on pole position. Here they go again, down the outside. This time it's Jeff Smith's chance. He just swings around the outside to get the move done. Can he get it stopped though? He's almost way too fast, but he just about gets it anchored up. And he gets back into the lead. So an impressive run from Jeff Smith. He's already trying to pull about a gap or so of a car length or so from Deeth and Co. behind him. Ben Colburn now in a bit of a catch-22 here. He's going to try and press, pressure Rupert Deeth in front of him, but also resist uh, other pressure, this time from Aaron Smith. So he's going to be very careful. He doesn't uh, find himself in a tricky situation. Kane Aston still fifth. Ashley Davis still sixth position. And the next group behind them has broken away a bit because Lewis Selby still, I think he still heads it, but I thought I saw a red car at the front end of that next group. So it could be that Colin Peacock has got past Lewis Selby. And also getting in there too, looks to be Rob Howard in the turquoise car. Ben Colbert with the fastest lap of the race. So the top five all together make their way in towards Richie's. And there's no change in the order. There's lots of jostling around and fighting for position. And I think Deeth's going to try and make another move back down towards the hairpin. But instead, finds himself severely under attack from Aaron Smith, who goes right round the outside of Ben Colburn and said, think you could pass me at Agostini 3 wide, can you? Whoosh, straight back down the outside he goes. And again, the brilliant thing is, we still haven't hit half distance. We're just hitting it now. Still 10 minutes of action in this mini media race to go. So, top six as it was. Smith, Deegan, Colburn. Uh, uh, Smith again, Aaron Smith, Kane Aston and Ashley Davis. Here's a scrap for seventh going on. This is Colin Peacock in the red car, number 14. There is Selby in the Napa car, the blue and yellow machine, number 18. And then Rob Howard in the turquoise car in number 72. This is over seventh, eighth and ninth of this second group of leaders. Doesn't look like any change in the foreground. Still uh, Aaron Smith hustling Rupert Deef at this point. And I suspect that... Jeff Smith's pace is quite strong to the point where he's being allowed to pull away here whilst everyone else is getting through. But <laughs> in perfect synchronicity, all six of those mini minions in the league group just lifted their inside rear wheel in, in tandem through there. These are the delight to watch and the delight to comment on. And I hope you guys watching at home are enjoying this too because mini minions are putting on the best possible kind of show as they always do wherever they go. Back into the complex, under the bridge. Deeth back into the lead now. He's managed to get the, to get the toe out of Williams, but Jeff Smith will try and get him back. It's Smith's to the four, because it's second and third now for Jeff and Aaron, respectively. Colton still fourth, Aston fifth, and Aaron Smith had a look up the inside of Jeff as they came into the right-hander at Cork Corum. Almost endless right-hander. Just get the sense that any time that someone gets into the lead, there's a, 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 an air of kind of nervous laughter, thinking they're laughing because they're in the lead, but also nervous that they're about to lose it any second any second coming up. 
case in point, here comes Jeff Smith again. Down the outside, it's almost two by two like NASCAR at Daytona down the pit straight. Brilliant stuff. And here comes Deeth, has to go one side then the other. Where can he defend? He's got Aaron Smith to his, in, to, to his right hand side, Jeff Smith to his inside, outside on his left, trying to get through somehow puts the car in the middle of the road and still maintains the lead by the time they exit Richie's corner. Whether he stays there, we'll have to wait and see. Here comes uh, Kane Aston down the outside of Ben Colburn for fourth position. Can't get that one stuck and loses the gear and loses momentum. That now gives the chance for Ashley Davies to get through uh, down the outside in from sixth position. Just see towards the right a shot that uh, Ashley Davies' car is trying to go side by side. And there he is in the background going wheel to wheel with the former champion. And Aston, if he's not careful, because you can easily pass around the outside of these cars. We've seen several times before in this race. Uh, might lose the position, but Aston, being the champion that he is, he's wise to that and wishes to hold on. Seventh, eighth, and ninth all together. There is Rob Howard's brilliantly coloured turquoise Mini Melia. Back towards Onkies once again. Just looking at the results from. Silverstone, as we look back here and see 28, that's Robert Humphreys. He's running towards the back of the field. I think he's own pace, I suspect. He's fourth and fifth. So Kane Aston is still holding off Ashley Davies, but I suspect the fact that they are battling that much is losing them time to the four cars in front. So these four, even though they are scrapping, have got the ultimate pace to hold on. And Kane Aston just sent it round the outside to defend anything from Ashley Davies. Not on your life, Sunshine. Whoosh, straight in three goes. So into the bomb hole again. Seven minutes left on the clock, and Aaron Smith getting very racy. Took a little bit more inside curb than Rupert Deeth did. Deeth in that distinctive silver car with the orange rock and um, wheel arches is definitely doing everything he needs to to hold on to the place as best he can. All six of them closing back up again. And Aaron Smith pitches it in, as does Jeff Smith and Co. Look at that, he's in the perfect position. Latched right onto the rear bumper of Deeth. I'm certain with the momentum he's got. He will start to get a slingshot down towards turn one again. End of another lap. And they're starting to spread out a bit more here. It's becoming not like packed racing in that. It's more like tandem drafting now between these two. Everyone's kind of picking a drafting partner and thinking, right, let's all work together and see if we can get towards the front. And they are doing it. Look, you can see Deacon and Aaron Smith are together. Jeff Smith and Ben Colburn are together. And then you've got Kane Aston and Aki Davis are together. So that all six of them are kind of pairing off. It's up the inside. That's Tony LeMay battling with... Darren Cox, and also in there too, I think, is possibly the 20 of Sims. And that's a battle that's going on for just outside the top 10. I think they had Phil Bull and Brown in front of them as well. So that was 10th down to about 13th or 14th place. Leading three back into Agostini again. You just sense, again, they're having a great scrap, but possibly waiting for the last couple of laps to really see this race come alive, but more than it already has done. So, Six pack all together. Back into Williams. Sorry, into Oggies. I keep getting Oggies and. Uh, it's not even Oggies, it's Hamilton's. I keep getting Oggies, Hamilton, and Williams all mixed up, but well, I should know better because I'm a commentator. But, um, well, supposedly at least. But anyway, <laughs> coming through, uh, Williams onto the back straight again. Five and a half minutes to go in this first Dunlop Mini Media race, supported by Mini Spares. Smith here, a good chance to get through. You can see him just darting around the back of Rupert Deeth's car. Now, will he go outside line? Of course he won't go to the outside line. It's a mini-media race. Where else would he go? Round the outside, job done. Or is it? Because Deeth will try and get the undercut if he can. And he tries to go around the outside, but leaves the door wide open. And Jeff Smith, thanks to Jeff Smith says, thank you very much. You're going to make it that easy? Not quite, because Deeth tried to turn into the corner. Jeff Smith forced him wide. Now that puts him on the back foot to, to come under attack from Ben Colburn. Kane Aston's getting back involved. Nashley Davis is looking back in sixth. Aaron Smith is trying to make a break for it. He wants his second win of the season. He took a win and a second place at Silverstone. Deep to the win and a third place last time. That's the reason why there's a, a point gap between them rather than being level on points. And then the next highest driver that's in this race is Jeff Smith. And he took, looks like, a fifth, fifth and a fourth place. He's looking for his first win of the season. Last year's Mini 7 champion. Of course, former British touring car racer as well. And of course, his other half is uh, Joe Polly, who races in the Mini 7s as well. And of course, Brett Smith has come through the likes of touring cars and also raced Mazda MX-5s as well. This quartet going at it. Tony LeMay's in there somewhere. This is also Darren Cox. And I think we've also got in there too Phil Bull and Brown. And oh, Sims at uh, Sims King... 
Cox and LeMay. So that score's going to be rather than Tony LeMay and Darren Cox, you've also got in there uh, Mark Sims and Sean King. So that's a battle of the card which may started just outside the top ten. These six definitely did it. And up the inside looks. Uh, Jeff Smith, big late breaking move into the Agostini, gets the move done. But how long that stayed that last? Because he goes straight to the inside line. Aaron Smith says, right, you're going to make that difficult? I'll go around the outside like I've always done at several places. And Jeff Smith is really giving it some now. A big dive up the inside line, really light, late on the brakes. Here's the scrap going on for 11th place backwards. Battles most all the way down the field, wherever you look. Our leaders come back to Williams again. All six of them together. This, this race really is living up to the kind of race I hoped it would be for the mini medias. And here they go side by side again. Look at them, the two Smiths going wheel to wheel. It's the pink car of Aaron on driver's right. On driver's left, it is Jeff Smith in the orange car. And now look at this. You've got Deethan getting into the mix. Kane has got the toe. So has Ben Colburn. They've all got to sort themselves out somehow. Under breaks through Brandon Nelson. It is Jeff Smith who turns in. They clip the curb, so Jeff Smith now leads it. It is Aaron Smith second, it's then Rupert Deeth in third, Ben Coleman fourth, Kane Astin fifth, and Ashley Davis sixth. Ben Coleman a bit wide for the bomb hole. That will give the opportunity for Aston to get up the inside for four. But as we know, Coleman can stick it round the outside if he wants to. I'm sure he will if he's got the momentum and the grip to do it, which he tries to, but I think he has to capitulate and give Aston the place turning into Murray's. Yes, he does. So down to fifth goes Coleman, up to fourth goes Kane Astin. There is two and a quarter minutes to go. But uh, as David Anderson once said, someone hide the checker flag. I don't want this race to end. And neither do these guys either. But someone's got to win it. Someone's got to be second. Someone's got to be third and etc. So side by side, the Smiths into, into the right hand and wheel to wheel. Neither wants to give an inch at all. So they both held each other up. Rupert Deeth almost sneaks up the inside of Aaron Smith and says, oh, I better back out of it. Otherwise, I'm losing my front end. Now down towards the complex again. And they both try to outbreak each other. Jeff Smith, they're both looking at each other, trying to outbreak each other, and they both miss the apex completely. Jeff Smith holds on for the moment. Aaron Smith is giving it some. And as I hopefully anticipated, <laughs> the, uh, the chat is enjoying this as well. I can see it on YouTube as well. And, and rightfully so, you should be, because a minute and a half to go, and it's anyone's guess for victory. Here they go. Rupert Deeth is still in this. As is Kane Aston, he's up to fourth now. Oh, three abreast almost into Agostini. Deeth fires it up the inside of Aaron Smith for second place. Aston can get in the mix here as well. He can still be on the podium at this rate after he starts on pole. How ironic would that be? Gets down to about sixth in this league group and then at the flag if he turns up winning it. He's got to get past Jeff Smith and Deeth and Aaron Smith to do that. Not, not done just yet. Now this, this, this might well be the last lap in fact, I think. Because we've got 50... Well, wait and see. We've got roughly 40 seconds or so, 50 to 40 seconds left to go. So if they're quick enough, which they tend to be, we might get one more lap, we might not. But if this is the last lap, now they've got to try and make their dive for victory because all six of them are together and it could be anyone's guess. Any of them could win this one. It's side by side again. Here comes Aaron Smith looking around the outside. But Deeth holds on to the position. I think this will be the last lap of the race. So action all the way to the flag now. Pick your moment, make your move. Held it for the last 20, 19 and a half minutes. Now you've got to make it stick. Now you've got to make your move count. Jeff Smith flips the inside and picks up a little bit of dust. Fourth place now for Kane Astin. And can anyone beat it? I suspect we could potentially get a photo finish here. As the clock ticks down, it will be the last lap. It will be the checker flag this time by. And into Burroughs for the final time. They all three wheel their way through Burroughs' corner, up to the checker flag on the pit straight. It's been a magnificent mini media race from start to finish, as, it ha as anticipated it would be, up to the checker flag on the finish line. And it will be Rupert D who takes his first win of the season. It'll be almost side by side for second. It's Aaron Smith in second, Jeff Smith third, then Aston, Coleman and Davis, as you like. Top six covered by 1.9 seconds at the flag. Magnificent. Great stuff for Mini Medias, as I hoped it would be. Seventh place for Colin Peacock. Eighth for Rob Howard. Ninth for Lewis Selby. He dropped back a little bit. He was a bit of no man's land in the end. And the scrap for 10th and 11th backwards. Look at this. Two or three abreast across the line. And it will be Sims ahead of King, ahead of Cox. And we lost Tony LeMay a little further back. So he was in that scrap. So there might have been some contact possibly. Um, but Tony LeMay dropped back in that one. But uh, again, if you're in the chat, like you did with the sevens, if you enjoyed that, give them a round of applause. Give them some clapping emojis in the, uh, in the chat if you enjoyed that. Mini Medias never disappoint when it comes to racing action, and they certainly didn't right there. That was e epic stuff at the front. And any, any of those six drivers, any of them could have won that race. It was that close and that competitive. So well done to all of them for putting on another fantastic show from the start right to the very end. 
And I can tell you that Richard Colburn did actually, of course, make the finish. And he came home in 16th place overall. It was the sole Mini Libra driver. Uh, but hopefully, the other three cars that would have been out with him, Peter Hills, um, Philip Harvey and Lee Stanton, if they can get their cars fixed, hopefully will be with us tomorrow for their second race. And if they can be, it'll be a slightly bigger mini grid, and that will be quite entertaining in itself. So, I need to take a breather for a second there. I think I'll get that in a moment when we hand over to Richard, but we'll go through the results in a second once we uh, get the finish. The only car we haven't had across the line yet is the um, number 28 car, and that's of Robert Humphreys. And that's the one, I think that's the one we're waiting for. Here he comes. Running at his own pace, it seems, but uh, enjoying himself nonetheless. Here comes Robert, last car across the line. Here he comes, and in home safe and sound. He comes just to the look. So we actually lost Tony LeMay on the last lap, it seems. So he's obviously stopped somewhere on circuit for some reason. But after a thrilling Dunlop Mini Media race, spots supported by many spares, here's the result. Rupert Deeth wins by 0.2 of a second from Aaron Smith, with Jeff Smith third, Kane Aston fourth, Ben Colvin fifth, and Ashley Davis sixth. The top six covered by actually closer than that, 1.5 seconds at the end. It was a bit closer than I thought it was. Colin Peacock sixth, Rob Howard seventh, Lewis Selby in um, ninth place, it was. So Peacock seventh, uh, Howard eighth, Selby ninth, Bull and Brown tenth, then Sims, King, Cox, War, the sole mini Libra of Richard Colburn and Robert Humphreys round out the 16 finishes. We lost Tony LeMay on the final lap here at Snetterton. Well, magnificent stuff all round from them. And I think we can now hand over to Richard, who I'm sure has some very uh, excitable drivers from that first mini media race. He's down in part Fermi. Very definitely, Scott. Thanks very much. Rupert Deeth, many congratulations on taking a fine race win. It, it's never a mini race, is it, unless you can grab it on the last lap. You led early on, then it was taken back, you got it back, taken back, got it back again. That's mini racing at its best. And what strikes me is, A, you're looking very cool after a frenetic race and your car is still immaculate. That's how it should be. That's how we like to bring it home. Um, yeah, no, good race. Um, I got my uh, pit crew to hang out a sort of a two, two lap before the end because I thought I'm not going to do the one lap dash. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it paid off. So uh, yeah, very pleased with that. It was nip and tuck on the timing as well, wasn't it? With uh, I think we were worried there might have been an extra lap, but you guys are quick enough to get the checker out. Oh, well, that, <laughs> that worked in my favour then, didn't it? Yeah, no, um, cracking race. And, um, yeah, um, you know, to bring the car home clean in one piece, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's nothing major to do overnight. No, hopefully not. Uh, we'll give it a check over and uh, hopefully we'll go again tomorrow. And everybody stays with this formula. It's just such a great, you know, staying power. I mean, you're a former champion, and everyone just loves it and stays with it. Um, yeah, I think what it is is um, it, it is dr like driving a mini touring car. The grip levels and everything. People just can't understand how the little minis go around a corner as quick as they do. Um, but yeah, keep coming back and back again, and, and uh, yeah, I do love it. Do enjoy it. Fantastic. Well, well done, Rupert. Thanks very much. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Well done. The women are going to grab a, a word with uh, Aaron Smith, I think, in just a minute. We need, we're also being told to find Colin Peacock as well. So, so if we can find Colin. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll grab Aaron here. Well, well done. Second position. What a race thank that you. was. Absolutely mega. Yeah. Um, and thank you all for putting on a great show for us. And again, you've hardly broken sweat. I know. It's... Um to be fair, the racing is amazing, and it, this track lends itself to slipstreaming. And down the back straight there, it, it easily, when you get two cars in front, you can almost try and get past them both. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good fun racing. But wherever we see the minis, I mean, I'll, I was privileged to do um, mini racing here, the mini festival at Brands Hatch. Wherever you are, the racing is always fantastic. Yeah, we never fail to put on a show. There's always something going on up and down the order, and a little race taking place. So, yeah, no, it's good fun. OK, I'm going to have a quick word with Jeff Smith. Well done, Aaron. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's grab a quick word with Jeff in, in P3. Well done, Jeff. Nice move down at Agustin to grab the lead, but you weren't able to hang on to it. Yeah, well, I mean, that was uh, late on the brakes. That one was just about got it stopped. Aaron just about gave me enough room, and um, I didn't actually realise that was the last lap. I thought, that's all right. I've worked that way. We're a bit quicker than them. Timing-wise, I was just saying to Rupert, it was nip and tuck there about whether you were going to get an extra lap yeah, or not. My time has still got time, and as we went over the line, so I thought, great, yeah. we're going to get another lap. Brilliant. <laughs> and we didn't. <laughs> so, but no, it was really good fun. Really good fun. So great uh, bunch yeah. of people and really good clip. I mean, I was just saying, look, look at this. There are no scuffs on any of these front cars, and that was the closest racing you can see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, good respect. Um, certainly at the front, I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but definitely good respect. I've seen some crazy mini races in my time, certainly in the MIGs, but there was a lot of respect there and just enough room for each of us to, to do our business and uh, not touch, basically, so it was good. 
Pretty good. Obviously with the two formulas and Joe jo doing well in her season as well. Yeah, it's a good job I moved out of sevens. I'd make myself look an idiot, wouldn't I? <laughs> no, not at all. It's great to see we've got cars on track. Jeff, thanks for yeah, that. Thank good luck for tomorrow as well. So that's it from the uh, Mini Melias for today. And we've got a, another race with the Mazdas coming up. So let's go back to Scott with the grid and the rundown.